Good afternoon. My name is Ed Howard. I'm with the Alliance for Health Reform, and I want to welcome you on behalf of Senator Rockefeller, Senator Blunt, our board of directors, uh, to today's program on the current status of efforts to, the, to stand up these uh, health insurance exchanges or marketplaces in every state. Now, come October 1st, which is just over seven weeks from now, these entities are scheduled to begin enrolling individuals and small businesses into health plans with coverage beginning as early as January 1st. A uh, bit of context here, it's worth noting that most Americans who now have coverage will probably not be dealing directly with the exchanges, at least initially. If you get your coverage through your employer, and it's a substantial enterprise, you'll continue to get your coverage through your job, perhaps with some changes in what's covered and what you have to pay. Uh, but for those who don't get coverage through their work or whose jobs don't bring insurance with them and some others, the exchange, the marketplace, in your state will be the place to go. And there will be at least one in every state. As we tried to convey in the title to this briefing, that is different strokes for different states, not all of these exchanges will be the same. They're going to share some common standards, uh, but they're going to differ in many and many important ways. In recent months, we've heard a lot of predictions about uh, train wrecks and on-time arrivals and other uh, metaphoric outcome predictions related to the exchanges. We're not going to try to validate uh, one or another of those sets of predictions this afternoon. But we do think it's timely to take stock of where different state exchanges are in their preparations, what kind of choices are being made, how insurance companies are coping with those changes, and what ordinary folks might encounter when they begin trying to sign up. We're pleased to have as a partner in today's program the Commonwealth Fund, which is a century-old philanthropy established to promote the common weal, the common good. And we're lucky enough to have as a co-moderator today Sarah Collins, who's the vice president uh, for affordable health insurance at the fund. Sarah and her fund colleagues have produced some of the best analyses of the issues confronting those trying to get the exchanges up and running, and you'll find a couple of good examples of that in your packets. Sarah, welcome back to the moderator's chair. We're looking forward to having you help frame this issue for us uh, for the discussion this afternoon. And on behalf of the Commonwealth Fund, I also want to extend a warm welcome to everyone today on this really warm, warm day in Washington. Um, the Congressional Budget Office, um, let's see, this was not, it's not advancing. We just write it that write young that. lady there. <laughs> We're not. We're not advancing, yeah. Thank you. So the Congressional Budget Office is estimating that by about 2018, about 25 million people are expected to enroll in health plans through the new health insurance marketplaces, also known as exchanges. Um, the majority of the enrollees will be eligible for um, subsidies to help pay for their health plans. Obviously, this isn't going to happen all in one year. Um, CBO is projecting that about 7 million people will enroll in the marketplaces next year um, in 2014, rising to about 13 million by 2015. In Medicaid, um, CBO is projecting an increase in enrollment of about 9 million people, um, rising to 12 million by 20, 2015. Next slide, please. Um, certainly the hallmark of the reform law is the degree to which implementation is taking place at the state level and how local politics and decision making will influence both state and national outcomes like enrollment, reduction in the number of people who are uninsured, premiums. So these two maps um, give you a sense of where, what the potential is for variation um, in these outcomes. These are both interactive tools right now on the Commonwealth Fund's website. But on the left, um, you can see state decisions regarding their marketplaces. 
16 states in the District of Columbia have opted to operate their own marketplaces next year. Seven states will operate their marketplaces in partnership with the federal government, and seven others will have federal marketplaces but will play an active role in plan management. Utah will run its own small business marketplace next year with the federal government running its individual exchange, and New Mexico will follow a similar model, but 19 states will have full-fledged federal exchanges. On the right, you can see decisions that states have made on whether to expand their Medicaid programs. So far, 22 states in the district are, are expanding. Three states, um, including Arkansas, are expanding or considering expanding with a variation. We're really lucky to have Joe Thompson here today to help explain this to us. But about 25 states are either undecided or have decided not to expand. Next slide, please. Certainly one of the most exciting aspects of the summer has been watching the steady release of proposed 2014 premiums for plans that will be sold through the marketplaces next year. For the individual market, it's difficult to compare rates right now to what they'll be in 2014 since the benefit packages vary enormously across people, across regions. People are charged based on their health and gender in most states. So it's really difficult to make apples to apples comparisons between the rates now and what we're going to see next year. In this analysis, HHS compares what the Congressional Budget Office had projected premiums would be next year, and in 11 states, premiums for the silver plans to be sold through the exchanges are coming in on average 10 to 18 percent lower than CBO's projections. It's also important to keep in mind that these rates are before subsidies. So most people who buy plans through the marketplaces will pay substantially less than these rates depending on their incomes. Next slide. HHS found similar results for small businesses, looking at actual rates in the small group market inflated to 2014. The proposed rates for, silver, for the lowest cost silver plans are about 18% lower than predicted rates. So far at least, we are seeing a newly regulated market that bans insurance carriers from charging premiums based on the risk profile of their applicants combined with the requirement that everybody have health insurance, so two really important pieces um, of this puzzle. But we're seeing a market that's, that's shaping up really to be quite competitive on dimensions that are meaningful to consumers, principally price um, and value. Next slide. In addition to questions about premiums, um, there are so many others that are on everyone's mind um, as we look forward to October 1st, open enrollment beginning less than two months. And here are just a few. Um, in the very, very near term, how are the marketplaces shaping up? What are the key differences across states? Are insurance carriers signing up to sell plans? And how does participation by carriers vary across states and even within states? What are federal and state governments and stakeholders doing to ensure broad public awareness of the marketplaces and people's eligibility for subsidies? What will be the experience of people who choose plans through the marketplaces? Do they enroll? Why or why not? And how many states will participate in the Medicaid expansion next year? In the short to longer term, will different marketplace designs affect outcomes like enrollment, premiums, and even delivery system innovation? How will state approaches to the Medicaid expansion affect exchanges, the Medicaid program, the marketplaces, individual and government costs? And how are state and federal governments coordinating exchanges and their Medicaid programs? And with that, I'll turn this back over to, to Ed and look really forward to the panelists' presentations and your questions. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Sarah. Let's see what we've got here. It's very hard to see on our flight. There we go. Sorry. A um, couple of housekeeping items before we get to our panelists. If you are in a Twitter mode, you can uh, use the hashtag at AHR exchanges, as in Alliance for Health Reform exchanges. And that is on the title slide that you see um, up on the screen. There's going to be a video recording of this briefing available in a couple of days, followed by a transcript a few days later, both on our website, allhealth.org. Uh, you'll find also there background materials, those of you in the room will find not only the ones that you have hard copies of in your packets, but also additional materials that you can use. 
If you're watching on C-SPAN, you might take note of that. If you have access to a computer, you can go to allhealth.org right now, follow along with the slide presentations from our speakers, and have access to those background materials that I was mentioning. I uh, would like to ask those in the room uh, at the appropriate time, if you want to ask a question of our panelists, there is a green question card that you can use. There are also microphones that you can come to to, re to tell your question in person. And at the end of the briefing, we'd love to have you fill out the blue evaluation form so we can uh, improve these uh, programs and get uh, to the topics and speakers that you'd like to get to. Now, what we ought to get to is the program. We have a terrific group of panelists today. We also have a lot of them. So we're going to try to ask them to be as brief as they can, and then we'll save a bunch of time at the end to respond to your questions.